welcome back to Movie Horizon. The title of this video is titled very vaguely because I didn't want to give away any spoilers. And by the way, this is a heavy spoiler discussion. But in any case, I want to discuss the whole question of where the tethers came from. How they were created, the so-called cloning program, all of that. Alright, so... Um, if you were to ask me how does the cloning program work, how did it work, all that, um, I would tell you there's a long answer and a short answer. The short answer is that it doesn't matter. It, it's, it's irrelevant. It's simply a, a plot device, a plot contrivance. Uh, just accept the fact that they're here, they're doppelgangers, they're they're mirror images of other people. They're the darker side of oneself. It's about the haves and the have-nots, all that. You know, I get that. I get that. That's it. That's it. The filmmaker did introduce this idea of a cloning program. So as part of our due diligence and as an intellectual exercise, I'm going to take Jordan Peele's premise on face value and go down that rabbit hole literally and um, examine how this program worked how it might have worked was it possible not possible all that all right so first of all the uh, idea could be introduced that these tethers are twins now if we were to look at that in the literal sense that would mean that they were born at the same time, meaning the tether and the human person, you know, born at the same time, with the same mother, under some type of medical supervision, presumably, and the like. So, in that scenario, you know, a woman goes to a hospital, knowing or unknowing that she has twins, and uh, by one means or another, one twin is essentially uh, kidnapped, or the mother is told that one twin died, when in fact it didn't die or shuttled away to some local underground bunker and um, I mean we've seen that type of concept before in films like The Omen and that's you know how the program stockpiled in essence all these twins but let's face it uh, to do that on some massive scale whereby you're doing it for every birth that ever takes place is just you know inconceivable and you know, of course, not every person in the world was a product of a twin birth, so that's just not possible. So, you know, all right, so if you're going to go with the idea that all these people, all the tethers are clones, and I think that's really the general presumption that the government sponsored, government created clones. And, and mind you, the, the, these tethers are all essentially the same age as the, the human counterpart, the subject of the clone. So that would necessarily mean that the clone was created at or about the same time as the real person's birth. That would mean that if by some means you get the newborn baby's DNA and started making a clone right away, that clone could necessarily be no closer in age than at least say nine months apart in age, right? So while they're not exact twins, you could say they are, you know, virtual twins. Now, yes, in films we've seen where the bad people or the scientists have taken someone's DNA and cloned them, and the clone was literally fully grown in literally days, if, if not hours. And these grown clones had, you know, full command of the English language, and they were highly skilled at fighting and shooting sophisticated weapons and and frankly, that defines all science and logic. So, you know, in this discussion, I'm really trying to stay within reasonable science and logic and plausibility. So, you know, going down that route, think about it. The, the uh, sheer infrastructure necessary to collect DNA from every live birth in America for years and years, that infrastructure alone would have to be massive. I mean, is that even possible that you could do that? And to boot, it's being done secretly, right? 
Just think of all the covert accomplices you would have to have in hospitals, in clinics, in delivery rooms all over the country, right? So if they're doing this for every American for, for years and years, and keeping them hidden underground for years and years, you are literally talking about millions and millions of people. Okay, first of all, do you really think there are enough abandoned tunnels and mines and subway stations, etc., to house millions and millions of people? I don't think so. And could you really keep all these people hidden for years and years? I mean, it would take hundreds of government workers just to manage and house all these people. Could you keep all these communities, because they're scattered presumably all over the, over the country, could you keep all these communities secret, literally, for decades? I mean, I know they're tethers, I know they're clones, but, you know, I mean, don't even these tethers get sick? Did they have their own medical facilities? You know, what happened when they died? Did they not have to go to the hospital for one reason or another, like you and me, for migraine headache? panic attack, infected tooth, busting their head open, slipping, falling after getting out the shower, with incarcerated hernia or something like that. Next point, who's who's paying for all this? Now, you're going to say, oh, the government. I mean, it's a government program. Okay, if it's a government program, why are they housing all these people in abandoned mines and tunnels and warehouses and sloppy conditions and dank conditions. Why not just use the government money and build massive professional facilities with regular food and housing, running water, you know, these lo a large massive detention center, large massive government hospital experimentation facility why do they have to do uh, all this in these abandoned facilities these dungeon like conditions why 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 are they resigned to having to do it like that searching out abandoned properties they have government money they can they can build all the all the housing facilities they want so 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 that that doesn't make sense all right so next point what exactly happened to the government program did they shut it down uh, were the government people killed or eaten or did they just walk off the job I mean what 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 exactly happened to these people okay so let's fir let's first address the question how long ago did the government you know leave or you know how long have the tethers been unsupervised you know basically running their own show you know, was it recently, a long time ago? Do we have any indication of this? Now, I uh, submit to you that they have not been at this facility, this one at the amusement park, and the tethers have been unsupervised at this location since at least 1986. Now, why do I say this? Okay, hear me out. They had to be unsupervised back in 1986 because... How else would the, you know, Tether Red, as a little girl, you know, wander up to the fun house to meet the human Adelaide child unless there was no supervision, government supervision? She could have as easily have just walked out outside, outside the fun house. Okay, now you're going to say, oh yeah, but she's, you know, just a little girl, little girls wander around, that's how... That girl even wandered off from her parents at the arcade. So, you know, little girls wander around. This, this, there could have been government supervision, and she just wandered up to the fun house. Uh, you know, they, they, they just didn't know about it and all that. Okay, look, if there was still government supervision at the time, how could this little girl, I mean, this is, and this is what she explained, how could this little girl drag Adelaide down into the tunnel we know it's not like a little short distance. They had to go through all these little obscure mechanical rooms and down escalators and all this type of stuff. All that distance. And then once she got back to the, to the you know, main housing location, she handcuffed the girl to a bunk bed 
Now, how how is it possible she's doing all this if the government is still there, her government handlers are all still there? Uh, you know, how 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 do they let that take place? How do they not see all that happen? How how could she do all that under the watchful eye, the supervision of who's ever there? That's just not plausible. That's just not plausible. So if if you if you uh, accept that those two points there, that means that these tethers have been unsupervised for at least thirty years. And if that's the case, is it plausible or even possible that these millions of tethers could go undetected for over thirty years? Furthermore, how do they get thirty years of supplies, clothing, scissors, all this? How is all this even paid for? Either way, let's say that the uh, government left. How could they shut the program down and leave literally millions of tethers to fend for themselves? I mean, that was the shutdown plan? Just to walk away? I mean, really? Like on a Friday, they get the letter, oh, we're shutting it down, so they just... Friday, they turned out the lights, collect the baggage, cleaned out the files, left the building, and just left the tethers behind. That that was that was their shutdown plan. Does that even make sense? You know, leave all these people no no means of survival. They wouldn't figure out that these people would just venture out into the world and and cause havoc. I mean, it's not like they left. And you know, locked them all inside cages or anything like that. Now they, it seemed like they was basically free to move around. They didn't figure that these tethers would just wander out into the above world, and then reveal the existence of this massive program. I mean, they 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 weren't gonna they weren't gonna put all these tethers to sleep or anything like that. I mean, that, that well, I certainly doubt that I mean that would make for some other little thriller movie but what you know that's not generally the way they would do a, a human experiment a human experiment program okay so alternatively you're gonna say oh no 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 see the tethers took over they were tired of being treated shabbily and they they killed all the government people and um, all that all right so, let's let's look at that that idea. Now, what are you gonna say? The government just stood by and let all this happen, and they just let it happen and just still just walked away. They didn't respond or anything like that. They just said, "Oh, okay." They didn't re- retaliate. They didn't say this is unacceptable. We're gonna you know put these tethers all in some type of detention. They just allowed all these hundreds of government people to get killed and they had no response whatsoever that doesn't make sense okay next point uh we have to imagine that you know this one facility that we see here in this film is can't be the sole facility in the country i mean just uh semi-logically we're talking about millions of people uh and semi-logically they have to be similar facilities all over the country housing you know hundreds of people each if not hundreds of thousands of people semi-logically in each of these facilities how are they all you know coordinated because it seems like there's some element of coordination they're presumably all wearing the same clothes I mean these facilities are spread all over the over the country I mean are they all sort of under under the direction of one person i mean is red the de facto leader of the entire i'll call it tether nation because she i mean we, we we're led to believe she's the only one who can talk and logically it's hard to imagine the other people who would be able to talk in these other facilities so does that make her the leader of the entire tether world 
You just watched the first part of a two-part series. To watch part two and the conclusion of this program, please click on the thumbnail or on the link in the description box below. Thank you.